learning how to do an item toggle where you can toggle a sword or maybe, you know, a gun, rifle, grenade launcher, whatever stupid thing that you want to hold in your hand and wave it around in VR chat. But it's an item toggle. And we're going to be doing this with a sword from VRC Mods, as an example, Stig Sword. Um, if you read the description, it says Poyomi shaders required. So make sure that you import Poyomi shaders to your project ahead of time. Um, I already have it imported in here, and I'll probably provide a link in the description for Poyomi if you need it, but you're going to need that for this. So we're going to import our sword real quick. I already have it open. We're going to hit all import. Not very many things to import. And you'll see the folder popped up, Stig Sword. So we're going to open that. And you'll notice that there's four broken shaders right here because they're pink. And don't panic. Always rule number one, don't panic. All we need to do is, since we have Poyomi shaders already installed, which as I said, make sure you import that ahead of time if you haven't, we're going to hold down shift. We're going to click the first one and then click the last one. And that selects all the broken shaders. And then we're going to go to the top right up here and change the shaders to Poyomi. Like this. Poyomi tune. Now, if you're using Poyomi Master, it might say Poyomi Master or Poyomi Pro, whatever version of Poyomi you're using. In this case, it's just the very most recent version of Poyomi Tune, at least I think so. <laughs> but as you can see, it fixed all the shaders. And you'll also see in this folder the actual sword itself. We're going to go ahead and drag this into our project. When you drag it in, it's not going to be centered. So we're going to go ahead and center it real quick. I'm just going to go to the position. Zero, zero, zero. And it's also very large, so we're going to go to our scale tool, and make it smaller. We can adjust this later, but I'm just going to make it smaller in general. I'm going to also move it over here a little bit, just so it's a little bit... There we go. So, you'll also notice that the sword up here in our hierarchy is its a blue prefab. We want to right-click it and unpack prefab completely. The reason we're doing this is because all of these other little cubes and you know cylinders, anything that's a part of the sword, if you want to, let's say, edit it or change the shader on it, you're going to want to unpack the whole prefab. Because if you don't unpack it, it will not allow you to move any of these items. So once we have our unpacked prefab, our sword, we need to create a game object real quick. So game objects are really helpful for toggles and animations because if you don't use game objects when animating, it likes to break your avatar and break all your gestures. So what we're going to do is we're just going to rename this. We're going to keep the game object part, but we're just going to add on to it and say sword idle. We'll do sword idle. So sword idle is going to define the sword that's going to be on our back. So we're going to move this one under our back. It doesn't really matter what order you do it in, do it in, but Basically, we're going to have one sword that's on our back and one sword that's in our hand, and we'll make an animation to where one of them disappears, essentially. So, what you're going to do, though, is drag your sword onto your game object sword idle. There you go. So now, this is an actual game object, this sword right here. And so if you turn the game object off, it would turn the sword off. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and move this to wherever we want it. In this case, the back of the avatar. Kind of like a ninja. Ninja robot. Okay, we're going to move it back here. This is just going to be a process of adjusting. All right, I'd say right about there is fine. Okay, so we have a sword on his back. But what we need to do now is this game object is not attached to anything. It's just free in our Unity. It's not attached to the avatar. And more importantly, it's not attached to the right part of the avatar. So usually when you put an item on your back, you're going to want to put it on the spine of the avatar. So we're going to open our avatar real quick. Here it is, yeah, hips. And then let's see... Not sure where the spine is for this avatar. <laughs> um, so after looking a little bit at 
the parts of this avatar. Unfortunately, there is no spine, but the chest should work okay. It's the closest thing we can get. So we're going to drag our game object sword idle onto the chest. So we're dragging this game object onto the chest. And what this does is now it's attached to the avatar. So when you move around in Unity, it will be on it. In fact, you can even test this. If I click play. And we go to scene. We can move our avatar around just by clicking on our bot and we'll move it around. Make sure we're on the move tool. See? It is attached to the avatar. We want to make sure it's attached. I'll control Z, put it all back. Okay. So we have it on the back. But now, obviously, we want to toggle for it to go into our hand. That's the whole point. So what we're going to do real quick, we're going to click this game object sword out. We're just going to hit control D. So we're going to make a duplicate. I'm going to drag this down here real quick. And I'm going to rename this. And I'm going to call this game object sword toggle. And this one, I'm going to actually click on the game object. And I'm going to move it. As you'll see, now we have two. But now we're just going to rotate it to where it's going to be on our hand. Pretty simple. So we're going to do this. Move it. And you could choose what hand you want to put it in. I'm just going to put it in the right hand. You're going to have to change perspectives uh, pretty often to make sure that you get it centered and looking good. Because it's not going to look perfect probably because it's SDK2 and we're probably going to be using a fist emote. But it should look decent enough. You can also click this little button up here called Center and Pivot, and this will sometimes change the position of whether you want to be moving the game object itself or the actual sword. In this case, we're going to use Center. Most of the time, we're going to use Center. But yeah, looks pretty good. So. Um, now that we have that established, we need to, as I said, this is not connected to our avatar. So we need to move this game object sword toggle onto our wrist. So we're going to find the right shoulder, which is right here. Upper arm, forearm, hand. Yeah, we're going to use the hand because this avatar doesn't have wrist. It's just going to be hand. So we're going to game object sword, uh, sword toggle. We're going to move that onto the hand, right hand. So now what we're going to do is we need to animate these items. So the one that's going to be turned off by default is this game object sword toggle. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to click on this, the one that we just made. We're going to turn it off, turn off that game object, and it will be grayed out like this. As you can see, it's grayed out. And we can go ahead and close this for now. It doesn't really matter. And this one is going to be active by default. So this one is turned on. So, because when you're walking around, we're going to toggle the one that's in our hand. So now we're going to create an animation. To create an animation, you're going to click on Rbot, and you're going to click the Animation tab. If you don't have this tab, go to Window, and hit Animation, and get your Animation tab. And then you'll just drag it down here. But I already have it, so we're going to click Rbot, and hit Animation. And now it's showing, showing the keyframes for the idle animation, but we don't want that. We're going to go to Idle Read Only. This is where you change the animation. And you'll see there's a bunch of different animations for just standard VR chat things. But we want to create a new clip because we're making a new one. And I'm going to call this Sword Toggle. And now we're just going to add some properties to turn on the things that we want to turn on and turn off the things we want to turn off. In this case, we're going to be turning off the one that's on our back and turning on the one that's in our hand. So we're going to hit Add Property. we got to find both of them. So we're going to first find our idle one. Let's see where it is. It's somewhere in here. Chest. Game object sword idle. So once you find it, you're going to expand it, and you'll see a little plus mark. We're going to click this plus mark, and when we do this, it will add keyframes right here as well as right here. So these keyframes, we want to move this ending keyframe to the, to the very second keyframe on our timeline. So it'll look like this. And it may look broken in the scene, but don't worry about that. Don't be concerned with that. So we have two keyframes right here. And as you can see, it's showing that the idle one is active. But we don't want that. We actually want the idle one to turn off because we want this to disappear. So we're going to uncheck this on this keyframe and then move our white line to the second keyframe and uncheck this as well. 
So that means whenever we perform this, when you move this back and forth, you'll see that the idle one is has disappeared. And now we need to add one more property for the one that actually goes into our hand. So we're gonna add a property and we're gonna find the one that's in our hand. So just go down here and let's see, abdomen. I'm gonna go to right shoulder, upper arm, forearm, right hand, there it is. Game object, sword toggle. We're gonna turn this on, or add it as a property, I mean. It, well, and turn it on for that matter. So this is the one that's gonna be in our hand. There you go. So we're gonna turn that one on. And don't forget your second keyframe. Notice how I only did it on one keyframe. We have to move our white line, do it for the second keyframe as well. So you have two keyframes that look like this. And that's really all you have to do. Once you finish that, we do need to switch it back to the idle so that this whole animation doesn't break. So we're gonna click where it says sword toggle, and we're just gonna switch it back to our idle animation, like that. And your animation is finished. So you're gonna go back to your project, and you can close all this. As I said, make sure your sword idle should be active by default, as it is, because it's on your back. And whenever we perform that animation in the game, you will have a sword in your hand and the one on your back will disappear. But we're not done yet. We have to put our animation into the overrides. Do not forget before you upload. I often forget this. So you're going to take your sword toggle animation, which is located right here, and we're going to drag it into the fist animation on our overrides. As you can see, it says fist sword toggle. And then you can hit file save and you are done. You can upload your avatar and it will work. I will go ahead and upload this real quick and show you guys what it looks like in the game. And there we go. Let's go ahead and launch VR chat and test it out. Alrighty, so we switched into our avatar. As you can see, the sword is on my back and when I fist, the sword will be in my hand. That easy. Generally speaking, that's all you have to do. You're just making something inactive and making something active. And if I hit Shift F1, it will appear on my back again. You can toggle in between. And my other F keys will work, as you can see. It's not glitching out because we used game objects. Make sure you use game objects whenever, you whenever you're making toggles. You want to make sure that you're using game objects and properly activating them and deactivating them. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for toggling whatever item you want to toggle on. And I will see you guys in the next one.